on a patient who has three herniated discs in his lower back. He's visiting us from out of town. He came to Duke Spine Institute to have this procedure done. And he, uh, of course, as always, our patients are awake in the beginning and we put them to sleep. Once we gain access to the disc or discs, plural, that we're trying to get to. So we're going to start. We'll give him some more numbing medicine. <sighs> Oscar, that means hand me the numbing medicine, okay? You've got to make my surgery easier, not harder for me. You're right now, you're making it harder. Okay? You're not prepared. I need you to get prepared. Shot? All right, looks good. It's a nice trajectory. We're aiming for L5-S1. I've given him a little more numbing medicine. I need my anesthesiologist to make him comfortable. Shot? Some more numbing medicine. Flynn, let's show the audience what the Duke laser disc repair is. Yeah, I am waiting for you to take that picture, Monica. All right, we're encountering the facet joint. So I want to redirect, Chuck. Yeah, he's doing better now. How's our blood pressure, Chuck? Chuck? Huh? It's good? Are you happy with it? All right, we're on target right now for the L5-S1 disc. This is where he has his lowest herniation in his back <coughs> shot. You can see the tip of the needle is at the superior facet of S1. Let's get an AP. We're about to enter the foramen where the nerve root is. And the key here is to come in at the bottom of the foramen. <coughs> nice job. So you can see on the AP view, or just lateral to the facet joint, about to enter the neural foramen. Now, the Duke laser disc repair surgery you're watching is far less invasive than open spine surgery. Open spine surgery, like microdiscectomy, is horribly damaging. It involves a big incision, scar tissue, damaging the muscles and ligaments of the spine. And uh, people never are going to have a normal spine again. When you have a microdiscectomy or laminectomy or fusion or artificial disc, all those procedures cause permanent damage to the normal parts of the spine. Those are the things down here. With the laser surgery that we're performing, the only damage we're doing to this patient's body is the cut we're about to make in the skin. All right, AP. So that little seven millimeter cut we're gonna do is the only damage this patient will have. Other than that, we're gonna be spreading the other tissues apart gently, and we're going to enter the disc right where the tear and herniation are. And by entering the disc where the tear and herniation are, we're not doing any damage to the other parts of the disc. We're going in right where the problem is. Perfect, okay. Flynn, why don't you show our audience why people get back pain from herniated or bulging discs. Sean? Traumatic injury to the disc can cause annular tears to form. Pressure on the disc causes herniation of the nucleus pulpus through the annular tear. 
Inflammatory tissues develop within the annular tear, causing back pain. The inflamed annular tear generates pain signals. Additional injuries can cause symptoms to worsen. Inflammation from the annular tear can spread to nearby nerve roots, causing leg pain. Signals travel up nerves to the brain, causing localized back pain. Pain signals reach the primary somatosensory cortex, causing conscious awareness of pain. If you have a herniated or bulging disc and back pain, Submit your MRI for a free review at www.mri.dukespine.com. All right, welcome back, and we are now going to be accessing disc number two, which is the L45, because we're fixing three discs on this patient. Shot. We're fixing L45, L5S1, as well as L34. Shot. All right, you can see we're very close to the L45. Shot. Mm -hmm. Shot. Let's get an AP. An AP means a front back view. Right now we're looking from side to side. Now you can see this patient's spine on the x-ray looks pretty good. You can't see the herniated discs on an x-ray. You see them on an MRI. All right, so we're just outside the herniated disc at this point. You can see the facet joint is a bit enlarged from arthritis right where the tip of the needle is. All right, I'm happy with the positioning here. So we're gonna enter shot. We're gonna enter this L45 disc pretty low shot. I think I wanna be just a little bit higher shot. How is he? Shot? All right, so we're a little bit higher now, which is what I want. And I can feel the herniation with the needle. Once again, this is the L45. And the needle went through the tear in the back of the disc where the herniation came out of. It went through it so easily. Normally, you can't push the needle in that easily into a normal disc. All right, we're going to try to do all three discs through one seven millimeter incision. It's always better if you do fewer incisions. Sometimes we can do it, sometimes we cannot. We're gonna try. All right, so I just gotta kind of jockey the needle. Patient's very comfortable, he's sleeping, which is fine for right now. I feel, I feel comfortable with uh, where we are. Shot. If you have questions, feel free to type those questions up and I'll answer them for you at the end of the surgery. Um, I can't answer them for you right now, Sean. We don't have our microphone in the operating room working, so we're gonna have to do it later. Let's do some numbing medicine. Are we back, Sean? I assume we're back. Hey, Flynn, just stay connected and just mute when you don't need to talk, okay, to prevent feedback. All right. Shot? All right, great. Shot? So we're using this x-ray machine to navigate to the next disc, shot. And the x-ray machine shows me the spine, shot. And the spine is what I'm using to navigate, Sean. You can see we're lined up nicely with the next disc, but I need to be just a little bit more posterior, Sean. Perfect, Sean. Yep, looking good, Sean. Uh-huh. Are you awake? Yes. All right. Are you having pain in the back? Where is it? I can feel the herniation at the tip of that needle. 
Show, show the audience the tip of the needle with your arrow. You all see that white arrow? And right there, it's touching the herniation. See the herniation there? Normally, you can't see a herniation on x-ray, but you can actually see this one. Let's get an AP. So we're very close to being done with the positioning of the needles, which is the first step of the surgery. Next, we're going to do our discogram. We're going to test these discs to see if they truly are painful. That's perfect. We're in perfect position. It takes some practice to get used to putting these in, but um, yep, really good. Again, um, it went in very easily because the tear where the herniation is coming out is just so big. You can see it on the MRI that there's a big tear back there. So it's called the annular tear, and that's what makes herniations possible. The first step in all herniations is the annular tear. All right, we'll need him awake. Now, folks, the next step here is to... Um, we want to test these discs to make sure they're causing his back pain. I know they are based on experience, but I want to verify that. So he has three discs, the L5S1, the L45, and the L34. And when I examined him, he told me his pain was in this area right here on his back. So right where the herniations are. And each one of these discs has a tear in the back wall, and that's allowing a herniation to come here. The jelly from the center is coming through the tear, causing pain, all right? And the first one is the L5S1. This one is the L45. And the last one here is L34. We're gonna check each one, okay? Um, I don't think we're ready for the laser yet. Let's turn that off. <clears throat> Are you awake? Are you comfortable? Yes? How long have you had back pain? How many years? Nineteen eighty nine. His this patient's back pain started in nineteen eighty nine. Who's good at math? Huh? Let's just say nineteen ninety, right? That's thirty-three, 33 years, years, right? So this patient has had back pain for thirty-three years. Okay? Now he lives in New York. Now why would somebody who lives in New York with all the best doctors in the world have back pain for 33 years. Anybody know? That's right. So number one, those doctors failed to diagnose the right problem, the cause of his pain. So it's a failure to diagnose. They didn't know where it's coming from. And then, of course, they didn't treat it either. They don't know how to treat it. So they had a failure to treat, FTT. This patient found us and is here now to get his back fixed. So let's see if we can do that for him and end the 33 years of pain and suffering. Are you comfortable? Yeah. Any pain? All right. Not bad? Not bad. All right. How bad is that on a scale of 1 to 10? 10. 10 out of 10 pain. Okay. So you can see on the x-ray, we just tested the L34. And he called. Is that where you typically get back pain? Yep. Concordant. Okay. All right. Is it better now? Okay. Okay. We'll give him a second. Is that better? All right. He said, yeah. So basically what I just did, in case you're wondering, is a 
called a discogram. And the discogram is a test that not many doctors know about and that they certainly don't know how to do it. But it's an important test to figure out if the, the herniated disc we're targeting to fix is actually causing their pain. And the fact that the pain was concordant means that's where he gets his pain every day. It is the type of pain. And it went up to a 10 out of 10. So that means that that disc, L34, can actually cause on a daily basis 10 out of 10 pain, basically debilitating pain. What do you think he's going to do when he feels that pain start to rise? He's going to stop what he's doing. He's going to lay down, just like everybody else. That's why for 33 years he's been pretty much inactive, not doing anything because he doesn't want to set the pain off. Okay, we just confirmed that that pain is coming from L34, one of the three discs we're fixing. Are you better now? And he's awake. We need him awake to talk to us. And we're going to test this, but after we're done with this, Flynn, I want you to run the video on, again, why do people get back pain from a herniated disc? What's the cause? What's the mechanism there? Are you comfortable? Yeah. All right. How bad is that on a scale of 1 to 10? 10. Is that where you typically get pain? Yes. All right. So again, 10 out of 10. And what's interesting on this one is you don't see a lot of dye in there. That's concerning. That tells me there's probably a lot of scar tissue from inflammation. Yeah. So we'll still fix it. But... It just indicates that that has been going on for a long time. The more scar tissue we see, the longer the problem has been there. And we already know from his history, he's had this back pain for 33 years. This poor man, his quality of life has literally been robbed from him for 33 years for something that's so fixable and easy for me to fix. You better? How bad is that on a scale of one to 10? 10. Is that where you typically get pain? I have good news for you. All three discs are the cause of your pain. We're going to fix all three so they no longer cause you pain. So your travel to Florida is going to be worth it. You're going to get rid of 33 years of pain today. Amazing. It's, it's incredible. What's sad is that it took Dr. Duke Majin to have to figure this out. When we've had back pain for a thousand years in people. Why did I have to be the one to figure out it's coming from a tear? And these poor people have to live with this pain for a lifetime before they find us and get it fixed. So we're going to fix this pain today, and he won't have it tomorrow. All right. We're going to put you to sleep, okay? And when you wake up, we'll be done. I want you to count out loud. Can you do that? He's already out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> just like that, he's asleep. Okay. So now we can actually get to the surgery part. Now, just while we're here on this x-ray, Flynn, sh you know, go back to the x-ray, take a shot. And I want you to show them with the arrow where the herniation is. You can actually see the herniation with the discogram at L34. Look at the size of that herniation. There it is, that big black thing bulging out. That, uh, Monica is outlining it. That is the herniation. And the nerve root that goes down his right leg is coming out of the hole just above it. Show them that area just above it. Right back, a little further to the right. There, that white area there is where the nerve root. Little to the left, little to the left. Right where the air, little to the left. Left, left, right there. That's where the nerve root's coming out. So you can see the herniation is gonna be bulging out against the nerve root and also causing inflammation on the nerve root. Flynn, go ahead and show the video while we get started as to why herniated discs cause back pain and leg symptoms. Traumatic injury to the disc can cause annular tears to form.
Pressure on the disc causes herniation of the nucleus pulpus through the annular tear. Inflammatory tissues develop within the annular tear, causing back pain. The inflamed annular tear generates pain signals. Additional injuries can cause symptoms to worsen. Inflammation from the annular tear can spread to nearby nerve roots, causing leg pain. Signals travel up nerves to the brain, causing localized back pain. Pain signals reach the primary somatosensory cortex, causing conscious awareness of pain. If you have a herniated or bulging disc and back pain, Submit your MRI for a free review at www.mri.dukespine.com. The impactor? Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. So right now we're placing the tube that we're gonna do the entire surgery through. And because the incision is seven millimeters, the tube is also seven millimeters. I may need that back in a second. How's he doing? Let me have it. Trying to line these up nicely. That's good. All right. Lay still, you're fine, Sean. So our patients with this surgery, they don't have a tube down their throat. They're um, not under general endotracheal anesthesia. They're under what's called conscious sedation. A little bit back. Yep, that's good. Shot. All right, I may need to go. I think that's actually good right there. Let's take it out. So I've placed the tube that I'm doing the whole surgery through and placed that into the disc. Let's see, shot. Yep, that's perfect. Now. Folks, let me show you what would happen if we were doing uh, fusion. And I'm going to show a video in just a moment that is going to show you what we're doing. It's called the Duke Laser Disc Repair. And we're fixing three discs that are herniated. If we were doing a fusion, the incision, you see this metal rod? The incision would literally be this long, about 10 inches, right in the middle. And we would be ripping out bones and ligaments to do the fusion along with putting in screws and cages. Instead, we're doing the entire surgery through a tiny little cut to the side. Yep, move the floral out. Duke Laser Disc Repair a comparison with traditional spinal fusion surgery. A patient with chronic back or neck pain originating from a symptomatic disc injury could undergo either traditional spinal fusion or less invasive Duke laser disc repair. This MRI represents a typical case with L45 and L5S1 symptomatic discs. A symptomatic disc causing neck or back pain can include bulging discs, herniated discs, ruptured discs, degenerative discs, protruding discs, spinal stenosis, radiculopathy, and sciatica. This patient can choose traditional fusion surgery or the Duke laser disc repair to help alleviate the pain caused by and within the symptomatic discs. Here, two patients with comparable disc injuries are treated. On the left, the highly invasive spinal fusion, and on the right, the least invasive Duke laser disc repair. The spinal fusion requires a very large incision, usually leaving a large scar. The Duke laser disc repair requires only a very small incision, usually less than a half an inch long. In this small opening, a cylindrical rod, called a dilator, is inserted to gently spread the muscle to create a small passage and guide through which the surgery is performed endoscopically. The incision for the fusion continues, including penetrating the skin, fat tissue, and multiple layers of muscle through to the bone. 
With the Duke laser disc repair, a mallet is used to advance the tip of the dilator into the symptomatic disc. A tube, called the tubular retractor, slides over the dilator and is carefully positioned into the disc, again using the mallet. The rest of the entire Duke laser disc repair surgery will occur inside this narrow tube. To access the spine, the spinal fusion requires the muscle to be separated from the vertebrae. This very invasive action causes trauma and permanent damage to the muscles. Whereas in the endoscopic Duke laser disc repair, the muscle is not damaged. The endoscope camera is inserted into the tubular retractor to allow the surgeon to guide the laser inside each symptomatic disc. To accommodate the fusion hardware, a large bone grabber is used to perform a laminectomy by removing bone from the spine. The fiber optic laser used in the Duke laser disc repair is manipulated with great accuracy to remove only painful inflammatory tissue from the disc. In this highly magnified view, the laser is used to precisely remove damaged disc material that is causing the pain. The laser is debreeding, or essentially vaporizing, damaged tissue in the disc's outer layer, or annulus, specifically at the annular tear, the source of the rupture or herniation and pain. After the fusion patient's damaged discs are removed, a metal or plastic cage housing bone grafting material is inserted in place of the removed discs. Once the laser has removed the painful part of the annular tear, the endoscope and tubular retractor are removed, leaving less than one half inch incision in the skin, which is closed with a single stitch, strips, and a band-aid. Total time for the Duke laser disc repair surgery, approximately one hour. The fusion, however, is still underway. Holes in the spine must be tapped in preparation for the large pedicle screws that anchor the fusion hardware. The Duke laser disc repair patient is in recovery usually 45 to 60 minutes before release to go home. The fusion screws are inserted into the bone, as shown in the x-ray. After all screws are in place, rods are used to connect the screws together to prevent movement of the secured vertebrae. Crosslinks are added to bridge the rods together for additional stability. Fusion hardware, by design, is to fuse joints that normally move, preventing natural movement in the damaged portion of the spine. Whereas with the Duke laser disc repair, there is no loss of movement. Normal movement and flexibility of the disc and joints is preserved. The Duke laser disc repair patient is soon back home, enjoying life, with a very fast recovery, allowing normal activities without pain. Meanwhile, bone graft material is placed throughout the fusion surgery site. These morselized pieces of bone will eventually grow together to help promote the fusion process. Prior to closing the wound, a temporary drain is installed to allow excess fluid to drain. Average surgery time of a traditional two-level fusion is two and a half hours, with an additional three to four hours in the recovery room. As we've seen in comparison, a spinal fusion requires a much larger incision and results in a significant amount of scar tissue. The Duke laser disc repair's half-inch incision leaves no scar tissue around the spine or nerves. A large amount of bone is removed with a spinal fusion. With the Duke laser disc repair, no bone is removed. Each disc is accessed through a natural opening in the spine. The entire disc is completely removed in a spinal fusion, even though only 5% may be damaged. The Duke laser disc repair leaves the normal parts of the disc in place and removes only the painful annular tear on the damaged disc. Fusion requires hardware, including screws, rods, plates, etc. The Duke laser disc repair does not require any hardware. The patient is totally hardware free. Fusion surgery is very invasive. Cutting and moving the muscle structures and tissues for a spinal fusion causes trauma resulting in permanent damage to the muscles. Whereas with the Duke laser disc repair, there is no damage to the muscles. The Duke laser disc repair is the least invasive surgery available to repair a damaged disc. With spinal fusions, Patients are required to take highly addictive narcotic painkillers, which can cause constipation, bowel, and bladder complications. Due to the minimal pain, narcotics are not needed with the Duke laser disc repair. Spinal fusions have a high risk for infection. The Duke laser disc repair has a very low risk for infection. In the seven years the Duke laser disc repair has been performed, there have been no infections. Spinal fusion surgery has a very long recovery and requires a great deal of physical therapy and time to heal from the trauma in the muscles and the spine itself. Whereas the recovery from Duke laser disc repair is in a matter of hours or days, rather than weeks or months. 
With fusion, the spine is being fused together, losing movement, whereas there is no fusion with the Duke laser disc repair. Normal movements of the joint in the spine is preserved. Spinal fusion results in loss of mobility. There is no mobility loss with the Duke laser disc repair. In fact, most Duke laser disc repair patients experience improved mobility after the surgery. The Duke laser disc repair is FDA approved. All the instruments and equipment used are FDA approved. This proprietary surgery itself has been peer reviewed and published and is performed exclusively at the Duke Spine Institute. With the highest published success rate of 95%, the Duke Laser Disc Repair is proven to be the most successful and least damaging spinal surgery in the world for the treatment of symptomatic damaged discs causing back pain, neck pain, sciatica, and radiculopathy due to herniated, degenerated, or bulging discs. Okay, we're at, we are at L5S1, just wrapping things up. For those of you who don't, don't know what that blue thing is at moving around at 12 o'clock. That is the laser fiber. And there's some blood vessels right there. You can see the little veins. And you see how the retractor is good at basically moving them over so we don't injure them. Um, there's a limit to how much we can retract them, of course. And if we did hit those veins, those are small veins. They're not a problem. They're not, you know, major veins that patient needs, you'll find that the laser itself will actually coagulate them. Watch my face, please. Coagulation means to close them off so they don't bleed. All right. Just about done here. Once again, this is the L5S1 that we're working on. I'm going to pull back, take a look. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try to work a little bit between these guys. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Looks good. We're done here at L5S1. You can probably see the nerve root up here. It's kind of buried in the fat. But overall, I'm happy. We got a lot done. You can see a lot of blood vessels. Anybody know why we have blood vessels here? Do you guys remember what I taught you? Remember, what's the process causing his symptoms? Inflammation. And what does inflammation for 30 years look like? Well, what it does is it creates these tributaries that bring blood to the disc so the inflammation can keep going. So. You'll see in inflamed areas of the body, more blood vessels there bringing blood because you need blood flow for inflammation to happen. All right, we are done with the L5S1. Gonna put a little betadine, antiseptic. All right, Flynn, why don't you show our audience what we're doing with the Duke laser disc repair? How does it work? Why does the Duke laser disc repair work to get rid of back pain and leg symptoms like leg pain or numbness or tingling or weakness? Disc herniations are a common cause of chronic back pain. The inflamed annular tear causes back pain. Inflammation of the nerve roots causes leg pain. A Band-Aid sized skin incision is made. A small tube is inserted without damaging the bone or soft tissues. The laser removes the herniation and debrides the annular tear. The annular tear heals on its own. If you have a herniated or bulging disc and back pain, 
Submit your MRI for a free review at www.mri.dukespine.com. Right, welcome back. We have just finished um, the Duke laser disc repair on L5S1. And we're going to get started at the next disc, which is L4-5. And then we'll finish up at L3-4. So we've already had made our incision at 7 millimeters. Now, why people ask me, why do you do this surgery? What's the purpose of the surgery? The purpose is to get rid of back pain, to get rid of leg pain, like sciatic pain, neurogenic claudication, radiculopathy. So to get rid of back pain and leg symptoms that arise from a herniated disc, bulging disc, degenerated disc, protruding disc, disc extrusion, prolapse, many different names, same thing. You need to treat the disc itself. And some surgeons do fusions for this, other surgeons do artificial discs. Those are both highly invasive surgeries. If done properly, they can have good results. But why put yourself through a major fusion surgery or an artificial disc surgery when you can have minimally invasive endoscopic surgery with better results, safer, and a one hour recovery. Go home and be back to work the next day should you choose to do so. Shot? That's why these people come from around the world for this particular surgery. They don't want open back surgery. Whoops. Shot? So we're inside the tear, take this. Shot. What I've done now is I've used the dilator to literally push the herniation back inside the disc where I can go find it and take it out safely. And while I'm taking it out, I'll move the, di the tube backwards and I'll clean up the annular tear. It's called an annular debridement. So that will allow the disc to heal. Shot. Once the disc is healed, you don't have to worry about another herniation. It's reherniation is uh, occurs because the disc never healed properly. Surgeries like microdiscectomy, they don't fix the tear and they don't let the tear heal. But there's still grunge in there, material in there. And it's that grunge inside the tear that allows another herniation to occur later on. Are we back, Flynn? So what's different about the Duke laser disc repair from other types of endoscopic or open spine surgery is we clean the tear with the laser. And it's the only surgery that does that. Because we do that, we're able to cure back pain from the disc. We're able to get rid of leg pain from the herniated disc. And we're able to let the disc heal properly. It takes about 12 months for the disc to solid, solidly heal. So in that first 12 months, the patient can easily re-injure their disc and, and have another herniation. That rate of re-herniation is 1%. It's much less than open surgery. It's the least of all, actually, the least of all open surgeries or all surgeries. 1% re-herniation rate is the lowest re-herniation rate for any spine surgery. So it's not zero. Um, and I'm going to tell you the reason I believe it's not zero is because some patients really just don't listen to the restrictions that we give them. And they go out and do too much because they're feeling so good. They think they're healed. And yes, the pain is gone from before surgery, but that doesn't mean that things have healed. Healing takes a long time with this because they don't have any blood supply. The blood supply is just on the outside. And because of that, the movement of nutrients required for healing is through diffusion. And diffusion is a slow process, okay? It's very slow. Diffusion is the movement of a substance through a medium that's driven by what's called the concentration gradient. And 
concentration gradient is quite interesting. It's the concentration of a substance in a solution in a given area and what drives those substances to spread out are um, forces of repulsion between like molecules, basically. Now you can also have forces of attraction between those molecules that are the substance and the surrounding solution. And these are, gets into complicated physics and chemistry, but long story short, there's no like uh, blood supply to the center of the disc to allow it to heal faster. Our vascular system, which consists of arteries, capillaries, and veins, is, allows a very rapid distribution of nutrients and removal of waste, like carbon dioxide or acid, lactic acid or stuff. It allows a fast redistribution of substances that allow our body to do what it does, like run and jump and swim and be active. But the one tissue that doesn't get much blood supply is the disc. The disc is, for the most part, metabolically inactive. It doesn't really do much, the center of the disc. So it doesn't need a blood supply. It's not exercising like muscles are. It doesn't do anything but act as a cushion, a hydraulic cushion. But the annulus does have a blood supply, which is the outer wall. And that's where problems happen, is in the annulus, the annular tear. Flynn, why don't you show our audience the video of the Duke laser disc repair one more time so they can understand what we're doing with the laser and how we're repairing the discs to take away the pain. Disc herniations are a common cause of chronic back pain. The inflamed annular tear causes back pain. Inflammation of the nerve roots causes leg pain. A band-aid sized skin incision is made. A small tube is inserted without damaging the bone or soft tissues. The laser removes the herniation and debrides the annular tear. The annular tear heals on its own. If you have a herniated or bulging disc and back pain, submit your MRI for a free review at www.mri.dukespine.com. All right, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the video again, showing how the laser cleans out the tear, gets rid of the herniation that is stuck inside the tear, causing all the pain. And that's what we're doing. What you're seeing here is the tear. And I'm cleaning out the jelly stuck inside the tear. We're almost done. You can see the epidural fat right there. And starting to see some fibers of what's called the posterior ligament, posterior longitudinal ligament, which tells me I'm near the, nearly done. But we've gone from inside the tear to outside the tear. And I'm using the laser to debride the nucleus propulsus that's degenerated and sitting inside the tear. I was just telling everyone I watched Thor last night, the new one, Love and Thunder. Love and Thunder. It was pretty good. Um, I like the original Thor movie a little bit better. I don't know how the rest of you all feel about it, but it was a good movie, entertaining. That's what we talk about when we're not talking about surgery itself. But listen, feel free to type up questions. I can't answer them for you right now, but I'll answer them for you shortly when I get out of here. I'll be done and answering your questions in about 20 minutes, okay? So feel free to type up your questions. 
and I'll be happy to answer them for you. We're almost done here at L45, and then we're going to move over to L34. Just one thing to notice here, it's kind of interesting, is just near the laser tip is actually normal nucleus. See this right here? That is normal nucleus propulsus. Notice it didn't stain blue. The degenerated nucleus material stains blue. So we're going to leave the normal nucleus there. People ask me, do you take out normal disk? The answer is no. We can see a difference between normal and abnormal. And we only take out the abnormal stuff. I'll be done here in about 10 seconds. Uh, I'll just say a minute. 10 neurosurgical seconds. Beautiful. That's it. Laser off. There's the nerve right there. We don't get to see it off. And you all see that? Since I am at the L4-5 disc, that's the L4 nerve root right there. But you see how close it is to where the herniation was. Okay, a lot of times it's hiding in the fat. We don't get to see it. That white thing is the, is the covering over the nerve root. That is the L4 nerve root. All right, we're going to suck all the juice out and we're going to move on and give a little antiseptic called betadine, which was developed at NASA just down the road. And um, we've never had an infection in this laser surgery at Duke Spine. Now, the good news is even with fusions, we rarely have infections these days because we use what's called topical vancomycin for all of our posterior spine procedures, whether they're lumbar uh, decompression infusion, hold on, or they're a posterior cervical laminectomy infusion. It's pretty well known that going through the back of the spine, back of the body to the spine, is the highest chance of infections. And when you put hardware in, I didn't use it yet. I need it now. When you put hardware in, pay attention, man. When you put hardware in, that increases the chance of getting an uh, infection. So because these surgeries don't use any hardware, patients don't have a risk of infection like they do when they're having metal or artificial disc put in. All right, coming out with our tube, we've got one more disc to fix, and then we'll be done. Come on in. Keep going, yeah. We, you got to be on your own there. Just bump them out of the way. Go on. Flynn, are we back? Okay, we are going to finish this surgery with one more disc that we're repairing. That's the herniated disc at L3-4. Just to remind you, in case you missed the beginning, we, we tested these discs to see which ones are causing pain, and all three of them cause, caused his pain. So now we're going to fix the last one shot. All three of them caused, caused what's called 10 out of 10 pain, which is the highest pain you can possibly get. Hold pressure here. Hard. Let me in. Shot. All right. Now, why is our picture so bad? What can we do about that? Let's see. I think you're off, way off on WAG. That's why you're seeing weird stuff. Remember, you want to be on the muscles. Muscles are here, not over here. Oh, boy. Let us know when you're ready. You're way overexposed. You're, you're not wagged in properly. Try to get it fixed. I'm going to go get a coffee. Let me know when you're done.
So Flynn, why don't you play a testimonial of one of our patients who had this surgery done so people can see what a difference it makes in people's lives, having the Duke laser disc repair. It's Dr. Arjig Majan at the Duke Spine Institute here in Florida with one of my patients who had the Duke laser disc repair for a back injury and it was around six to eight weeks ago. And you're back for a checkup. How are you feeling today? I feel wonderful. I feel great. I feel fantastic. I mean, this is the man. <laughs> He's the man. Well, and you. I came in with a lot, a lot, a lot of pain, a lot of pain. I couldn't believe it. And, and now I'm virtually pain free. It's just, it's unbelievable. How did you, how long did you have your back pain? How did that start? Oh God, that happened many, many, many years ago at work, uh, at least 20 plus years. Uh, and I had other surgeries in the past and uh, they, they really didn't help. And it, it just, it just re this last one, it just got so bad that I, I had to do something. I had to do something. So I, luckily through the grace of God, I came here and- Amen. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm A1 now. Awesome. So you had your surgery, you've been doing therapy. Uh, would you say the pain you had in your back before surgery is still there or is it gone? Oh, it's, it's gone, it's gone. Uh, uh, I have a little twinges now, but they're muscular and that's, which is fine. That's gonna go away over time. But my God, what a relief. I'm, I'm ready to get back out there and do all the things I used to do, man. It's, it's kind of exciting, it's kind of fun. Well, it's important that people understand too. When you have 20 years of chronic debilitating back pain, what happens is the muscles in your back shrivel up and atrophy because you're really not active anymore because it hurts too much. So, you know, we can fix the spine pain, but it's going to take time to rehabilitate the muscles and get them back to normal. So I'm glad we're touching on that. Um, so what does your life look like now that we've gotten rid of your back and leg pain? Well, yeah, I'm going to go back to what I've always done and what I've always enjoyed doing, which is my, my automotive hobby. Uh, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to being able to actually lift things again and, and getting the contorted angles that I used to get working under cars and stuff. It's, gonna, it's just going to be nice. It's quality, of, quality of life is just going just gonna, to... It's, it's, Not too soon with any of that lifting engines all right, and contorting all right, your all right, all right, Yeah, all right. <laughs> but, I, but I have, all kidding aside, I have noticed uh, over the years I developed a way to walk, almost a crab walk kind of thing. And I, and I, I got used to it and I got, well, that's the way it's going to be. I don't have that now. I mean, it took a little while because it was some pain trying to get the muscles to come back. But my God, my God, you just stick with it. If you got to get it done, stick with it because it, it, you're going to get better. You're going to get better. Well, yeah. congratulations. Is there anything you want to say to wrap things up to your audience? He's the man. Come, come see this guy. <laughs> All right. Congratulations. Thank you, doctor. You God are welcome, bless. sir. God bless you. And welcome back. We're still trying to get our picture right with the fluoro. Monica, you don't see the pedicle of the bone at L3, how off they are. Stop holding the button down while you're moving the fluoro. That's why you get a blurry image. You have to stop the machine from moving and then push the button. All right. What do you think's wrong with the pedicles at L3, Monica? Do you think the pedicles are lined up at L3 or they're not lined up? That's because you didn't move it enough. Are the pedicles of L3 lined up? No. So what do you need to do? No, you need to move it even more. Are they lined up now? So what do you need to do? Why are you doing orbit? I didn't ask you to do orbit. It's WAG, Monica. WAG is what lines up the pedicles, not orbit. No, you didn't do it enough, Monica. That's why.
All right, so let's, uh, because we're sitting here, and we're all gonna start glowing green soon. Why don't we go to uh, another testimonial, Flynn, or another video until we can get this done. I'm gonna scrub out soon and go do something else. You just let me know when All right, so now you've had the surgery. How are you doing today? I feel awesome. I mean, the only pain is, you know, surgery site pain, and that's okay. it. No nerve pain. So the pain that you had before the surgery is gone. Gone. Cured. Gone. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yes, that's amazing. I'm Dr. R. Duke Majin with the Duke Spine Institute, and I'm here with one of my patients who just had the Duke Laser Disc Repair on her lower back, and she wants to share her story with you. Now, you came to Duke Spine Institute because you were having back and left leg pain for how long? Uh, well, that the terrible left leg pain probably about two years, but prior, I mean, I've had issues since I was 14 years old, so it's been a lot of roller coaster pain since then. So you've had back pain since you were 14. You're clearly not 14 anymore. No. <laughs> and so that's like 15, 20 years, right? Yeah, too long. And so why didn't you get it fixed sooner? Well, the doctors when I was younger didn't want to operate. They wanted to, you know, I was young. They didn't want to take a chance because the, all the surgeries then at that point, there was just nothing there that could, that wasn't going to be traumatic to my back and my spine. So I went through physical therapy shots, um, decompression they did that and nothing was really working and then it eventually kind of got better and then it would get worse and it would get better and it was just up and down up and down up and down and the reason it got better was the inflammation from the injury to your disc started to get better yeah but then you'd have another herniation with activity and then it made it worse so yeah. when we were in there and you can see from this video right here that we were pulling out lots of big fragments of disc herniation you probably over your lifetime from 14 until now had at least 10, 20 different episodes of herniation. And that's what we saw when we were inside there. Mm -hmm. All right, so now you've had the surgery. How are you doing today? I feel awesome. I mean, the only pain is, you know, surgery site pain and that's okay. it, no nerve pain. So the pain that you had before the surgery is gone, gone, cured. Gone, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yes, that's amazing. <laughs> Now, you're not from Florida. No, I'm from Ohio. So you traveled <laughs> from Ohio to the Duke Spine Institute in Florida. Why did you come all the way down to Florida? There was nobody near us or anywhere near us that had any other option besides either getting a discectomy or a laminectomy or a fusion. There was just no other, nobody was doing anything else. And I knew I didn't want to do that again because I'd already had that done. So it didn't work. <laughs> and, didn't work. Uh, I had a really amazing physical therapist that connected me with you and the rest is history. Yeah, your yeah. physical therapist found us and, mm -hmm. and was intrigued with the surgeries we're doing here yeah. and sent you here. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to tell your physical therapist, uh, I call him <laughs> Dr. Salinas, what are you going to tell him when you... Oh man, I mean I've already told him. I texted him the minute I got back to our Airbnb, I said, I feel amazing and I can't wait to tell all the rest of the patients in our Facebook group. like. This works, so. It does, the Duke Laser Disc Repair really does work. Mm. Well, is there anything else you wanna to say to your fans out there, or friends? <laughs> my fans and my friends. Um, thank you for praying. Thank you for, uh, you know, believing me. I think it, that's one of the biggest things. There's a stigma around back pain because you can't see it, that people are just faking it, or maybe they're babies. Like, why can't you just deal with the pain? And it's it overwhelms you, and so to come someplace that believes me and then fixes the problem and now I'm sitting here and I can be like a fully active mom so I'm just beyond thankful thank you <laughs> yeah chronic pain robs people of their dignity and their their happiness and joy in life and and also their loved ones the people that care about them yeah because they suffer with you yeah, yeah. a lot well, congratulations and praise God yes. you found us. Thank you very much. And uh, I think you're going to do fantastic. I'm looking forward to being strong again. <laughs> awesome. Yes. All right.
welcome back. We've got our picture really almost perfect. We're off on orbit a little bit, but we're not changing anything. The dilator is sitting now at the foramen at the back of the disc. Just, if it isn't the x-ray, it's the anesthesia. It's good though, we've got plenty of time. It's only 1.30 in the afternoon. All right, you're doing fine. Just lay still, we're gonna be done soon. We have one more disc to fix. Any questions from our audience? No, you don't have to ask me. I just want to know if there's any questions. I'm going to be done soon. I'll come over there and answer them. All right. It's very hard for me to hear, but um, folks, if you're watching and you want to ask a question about the spine, feel free to. Dr. Berndez, let me know when you're ready. Guys, what's going on over there? What, what's happening over there? Huh? What's happening? Over there or over here? Over oh, there. I want this higher, so she needs to tie it a little more. So. Okay, you're ready. Right. Okay, we're ready to go. Okay, it's this goes to this hand, this goes to this hand. Try it again. Okay. Thank you. Try to do it the right way. I do things the same way every single time. Shot. Shot. All right. Shot. He's got a lot of pressure inside the disc. Uh, he did in the last one as well. Why is that pressure there? because he has inflammation and inflammation causes swelling. Swelling creates pressure. Good. Shot. Sometimes the pressure is high enough it'll literally push the instruments out of the disc. And we have to stop and put them back in. There we go. All done. Shot. Let's move the fluoro out. Okay, this is the last disc. This is the L34. We know this is causing his pain, 10 out of 10 pain, because we tested the disc earlier. And the pain is called concordant. Concordant just means the same pain the patient has every day, the pain they want to get rid of. Why is that important? Because people have pain for different reasons. Um, the herniated disc is the most common reason people get back pain or neck pain, but there's other causes of pain. And you wanna make sure that you're operating on the right thing. If they don't have disc pain, then operating on the disc won't fix their pain. So the discogram is a good confir confirmation or confirmatory test that tells me that we are operating on the right thing. Now some people have no back pain and they actually have just leg symptoms. In that case, you may still need to operate on the disc to get rid of the leg symptoms. We call that radiculopathy. And if it's pain down the leg, it's called sciatica. All right. We're going in with the laser fiber. We probably need about 15 minutes, doctor. We'll be done. Our patient is nice and comfortable sleeping.
This disc is pretty badly damaged, this L34. To me, um, you can see all the fragmentation of the nuclear material, the blue stuff. Lots of pieces. It's an indication of pretty significant trauma to the disc over the years. And that trauma can come in the form of falling or um, car accident or a sports related injury. The good news is when we're done, his pain will be gone from this disc. Look at the tear, by the way. It's really obvious if you look here, you see the fibers of the annulus right there, and then they're frayed right there in the middle. So that's the annular tear that allowed the herniation to come out. I'm gonna go in there and clean it up. You see the blue stuff stuck here? That's the herniation stuck in the annular tear. And that's what's keeping the annulus from healing. So I'm gonna give this patient a chance now with this surgery to heal their disc properly. And when that disc heals properly, there'll be no more back pain from it and there'll be no more leg symptoms like leg pain. The key is to debride the annular tear and Duke laser disc repair is the only surgery in the world that does an annular debridement. And we're the first to publish it. Back in 2010 or 12, no, it was 2012. We published our first paper on annular debridement as, the Duke, as part of the Duke laser disc repair. The laser is what I'm using to debride the tear. But no other surgeon does the annular debridement and if they do, it's because we taught them to do it through these sessions. Um, there are surgeons now starting to do this in other countries. We have um, a few surgeons, for example, in India that have prescribed to my technique with the Duke laser disc repair, endoscopic surgery. And I'm sure there are surgeons in China that are doing it as well because they steal everything. Though that said, one of my greatest mentors, Dr. Young, is Chinese. But he's a Chinese-American, different breed. He's very generous, and I will always appreciate his teachings. So in his spirit of teaching, I carry on and broadcast these surgeries so everyone can watch. Um, Surgeons typically don't teach the public about their, their craft, but I felt this was too important of a surgery with widespread implications in helping people get over back pain and neck pain. I felt it was something that needed to be shared with the rest of the world. That's why we broadcast it on social media platforms like YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, because we want people to be able to watch these surgeries. Now it's interesting, Flynn, why don't we ever get Twitter questions, Twitter viewer questions? Is this streaming on Twitter? Have we verified that it is? You know, I always hear about people on YouTube asking questions or Facebook. Well, if anybody out there is watching on Twitter, represent. Ask a question, I'll answer it for you, okay? Just let us know you're out there and that you're watching. All right, the yellow stuff here is fat. That's fat from the epidural space. That's not something we're interested in doing anything with, but it is billowing out, blocking my view, so I've gotta deal with it. Best way to deal with it is with the laser. Just zap it a few times and that gets it out of the way. It's important when you're dealing with these annular tears that you get the uh, medial and lateral components. This is the lateral component I'm working on right now. But um, I need about five minutes, doctor, maybe less. Talking to my anesthesiologist, letting them know. These are all pieces of herniation, by the way. Each one of those shapes is its own herniation. There's so many, you can see. 
just how many there are. This patient has a lot of herniated fragments here at L34. I'm feeling water on the floor. How are we doing on the water, the irrigation? The water on the floor is the irrigation from the surgery that we use. But is there a way to minimize the amount on the floor? I feel like it's spilling over probably right here. Endoscopic surgeries are typically use a lot of liquids, um, irrigation. So it's common to have water on the floor, but we want to try to find ways to minimize the amount of water as it poses a hazard, of course, to the staff slipping and falling or even getting electrocuted. Our operating room here was designed with, hello, laser, with uh, a special circuit that prevents anyone from getting electrocuted because uh, there are endoscopic procedures. All right, type your questions up. I'm almost done. And I'm gonna be leaving the operating room in a few minutes and coming and answering your questions for you. Two minutes. I have to say of all the discs that I fixed on this patient, this one to me is the most damaged, the most disrupted. And it looks like a lot of it's at least five years old, maybe longer. So this is something that's been going on for a while in this patient. This will be our last surgery for today. And we'll be back on Thursday. Despite giving Monica a bit of a hard time, I want to thank her because she's covering for Jordan who's out. And uh, I appreciate her help. You guys did a great job today. We're gonna be done in a second here and I'll show you uh, the incision on this patient. It's, it's only seven millimeters. Once again, we fixed three discs with this tiny incision. And let's see if we can find the nerve root again. Well, see this time, okay, there it is. You guys see that, that white thing right there? It has the veins and arteries on it. See, it's next to the fat. That is the nerve root. And you can see it's protected. Uh, let's see the laser one more time. There's a little bit of annular tear still there. I want to clean. But you see how the nerve root is, is outside the tube, protected during the surgery. So we know exactly where it is, and we make sure it's not being damaged during surgery. All right, done. Good job, everyone. Thank you for your help today. Folks, type up your questions. I'll come answer them for you. And uh, let's just take a look at this incision here. It's, it's incredible. The whole surgery for three discs was done in under an hour, and it was done with uh, a seven millimeter incision. I'm gonna show you in just a minute. I'm putting a little antiseptic in. We use betadine, developed by NASA, just down the road. For those of you who don't know, Duke Spine is located in the space coast of Florida, just outside of Orlando. Best known for Disney cruises. We get a lot of people on buses going out on the cruise ships, Carnival Cruise, Disney Cruise, Port Canaveral. Okay, let's just show our audience. Can you see this, Flynn? Yeah, the whole surgery was done through this little tube, 
three discs. I just redirected it each time. And um, you guys can see the tube here. It's literally like a little shake straw, you know. And so that's why we're able to do these surgeries with no bleeding and virtually no pain post-op. We don't give narcotics or opioids because patients don't need it after surgery. Um, and there's no staples or sutures to come out. It's a Band-Aid incision. People are up walking around in a few hours after the surgery. They can go for a walk on the beach. They just can't drive a car today. They can start driving tomorrow and pretty much go back to work tomorrow. So it's so minimally invasive, the spine surgery, that people can go back to work the next day without the pain. I remember we had a, a basketball coach for high school. Uh, he went to coach a championship match that evening. Here's the incision. You see this, Flynn? Right here? Seven millimeters. We're going to put a Band-Aid in just a moment. Thanks, Luis. Thanks, Oscar. Good work, everybody. Go ahead and type up their, your questions. I'll answer them for you. I've got a Ray Tech off the field. Remember, um, we have an app you're welcome to download for free and use, a Duke Spine Institute app on your phone. Just go to the App Store. And we have a website that's pretty cool. It's got a lot of information. If you know somebody suffering with back pain or neck pain, there's a free MRI review where we'll look at their MRI and tell them what's wrong and what needs to be done to get rid of their pain and fix those discs. All right, hope you enjoyed the surgery. Team did a great job, we're done for today. I'll come and answer your questions, so feel free to type them up. Flynn, why don't you run our comparison video? Duke Laser Disc Repair a comparison with traditional spinal fusion surgery. A patient with chronic back or neck pain originating from a symptomatic disc injury could undergo either traditional spinal fusion or less invasive Duke laser disc repair. This MRI represents a typical case with L45 and L5S1 symptomatic discs. A symptomatic disc causing neck or back pain can include bulging discs, herniated discs, ruptured discs, degenerative discs, protruding discs, spinal stenosis, radiculopathy, and sciatica. This patient can choose traditional fusion surgery or the Duke laser disc repair to help alleviate the pain caused by and within the symptomatic discs. Here, two patients with comparable disc injuries are treated. On the left, the highly invasive spinal fusion, and on the right, the least invasive Duke laser disc repair. The spinal fusion requires a very large incision, usually leaving a large scar. The Duke laser disc repair requires only a very small incision, usually less than a half an inch long. In this small opening, a cylindrical rod, called a dilator, is inserted to gently spread the muscle to create a small passage and guide through which the surgery is performed endoscopically. The incision for the fusion continues, including penetrating the skin, fat tissue, and multiple layers of muscle through to the bone. With the Duke laser disc repair, a mallet is used to advance the tip of the dilator into the symptomatic disc. A tube, called the tubular retractor, slides over the dilator and is carefully positioned into the disc, again using the mallet. The rest of the entire Duke laser disc repair surgery will occur inside this narrow tube. To access the spine, the spinal fusion requires the muscle to be separated from the vertebrae. This very invasive action causes trauma and permanent damage to the muscles. Whereas in the endoscopic Duke laser disc repair, the muscle is not damaged. The endoscope camera is inserted into the tubular retractor to allow the surgeon to guide the laser inside each symptomatic disc. To accommodate the fusion hardware, a large bone grabber is used to perform a laminectomy by removing bone from the spine. The fiber optic laser used in the Duke laser disc repair is manipulated with great accuracy to remove only painful inflammatory tissue from the disc. In this highly magnified view, the laser is used to precisely remove damaged disc material that is causing the pain. The laser is debreeding, or essentially vaporizing, damaged tissue in the disc's outer layer, or annulus 
specifically at the annular tear, the source of the rupture or herniation and pain. After the fusion patient's damaged discs are removed, a metal or plastic cage housing bone grafting material is inserted in place of the removed discs. Once the laser has removed the painful part of the annular tear, the endoscope and tubular retractor are removed, leaving less than one half inch incision in the skin, which is closed with a single stitch, steristrips, and a band-aid. Total time for the Duke Laser Disc Repair Surgery, approximately one hour. The fusion, however, is still underway. Holes in the spine must be tapped in preparation for the large pedicle screws that anchor the fusion hardware. The Duke Laser Disc Repair patient is in recovery usually 45 to 60 minutes before release to go home. The fusion screws are inserted into the bone, as shown in the x-ray. After all screws are in place, rods are used to connect the screws together to prevent movement of the secured vertebrae. Cross links are added to bridge the rods together for additional stability. Fusion hardware, by design, is to fuse joints that normally move, preventing natural movement in the damaged portion of the spine. Whereas with the Duke laser disc repair, there is no loss of movement. Normal movement and flexibility of the disc and joints is preserved. The Duke laser disc repair patient is soon back home, enjoying life, with a very fast recovery, allowing normal activities without pain. Meanwhile, bone graft material is placed throughout the fusion surgery site. These morselized pieces of bone will eventually grow together to help promote the fusion process. Prior to closing the wound, a temporary drain is installed to allow excess fluid to drain. Average surgery time of a traditional two-level fusion is two and a half hours, with an additional three to four hours in the recovery room. As we've seen in comparison, a spinal fusion requires a much larger incision and results in a significant amount of scar tissue. The Duke Laser Disc Repair's half-inch incision leaves no scar tissue around the spine or nerves. A large amount of bone is removed with a spinal fusion. With the Duke Laser Disc Repair, no bone is removed. Each disc is accessed through a natural opening in the spine. The entire disc is completely removed in a spinal fusion, even though only 5% may be damaged. The Duke Laser Disc Repair leaves the normal parts of the disc in place and removes only the painful annular tear on the damaged disc. Fusion requires hardware, including screws, rods, plates, etc. The Duke Laser Disc Repair does not require any hardware. The patient is totally hardware free. Fusion surgery is very invasive. Cutting and moving the muscle structures and tissues for a spinal fusion causes trauma resulting in permanent damage to the muscles. Whereas with the Duke Laser Disc Repair, there is no damage to the muscles. The Duke Laser Disc Repair is the least invasive surgery available to repair a damaged disc. With spinal fusions, Patients are required to take highly addictive narcotic painkillers, which can cause constipation, bowel, and bladder complications. Due to the minimal pain, narcotics are not needed with the Duke Laser Disc Repair. Spinal fusions have a high risk for infection. The Duke Laser Disc Repair has a very low risk for infection. In the seven years the Duke Laser Disc Repair has been performed, there have been no infections. Spinal fusion surgery has a very long recovery and requires a great deal of physical therapy and time to heal from the trauma in the muscles and the spine itself, whereas the recovery from Duke Laser Disc Repair is in a matter of hours or days, rather than weeks or months. With fusion, the spine is being fused together, losing movement, whereas there is no fusion with the Duke Laser Disc Repair. Normal movements of the joint in the spine is preserved. Spinal fusion results in loss of mobility. There is no mobility loss with the Duke Laser Disc Repair. In fact, most Duke Laser Disc Repair patients experience improved mobility after the surgery. The Duke Laser Disc Repair is FDA approved. All the instruments and equipment used are FDA approved. This proprietary surgery itself has been peer reviewed and published and is performed. Dr. Ardick Major here at Duke Spine Institute. It's Groundhog Day, I believe, right? February 2nd, so 2 2 2022. And I'm here with one of my patients who traveled from, where did you come from? Tennessee. Tennessee. And why would you travel from Tennessee to Florida to Duke Spine Institute? I have been miserable for months and I found you and did a consult with you and knew this is where I needed to come for good treatment and relief. And what kind of problem were you having that brought you to Duke Spine Institute? Severe lower back pain, which turned into sciatica and it was down my left leg constantly. 
I slept about two, three hours a night at most, and I could not sit for more than five minutes, and I had to be standing up. And did you try some other treatments in Tennessee or elsewhere? I did. I, you know, when this whole thing started and it was a bad flare, I thought I'll be able to work through this chiropractic, physical therapy, two spinal injections, massage therapy. And how did you know those treatments did not work for you? I had no relief um, at all. My, my sleeping continued to get worse and my, my pain was never better. And do you have relief now? Absolutely. I, I would say I have 95% relief. Awesome. And, uh, it, it's amazing. I, after surgery yesterday, I put on a back brace. I walked out of here. I sat down yesterday for probably over an hour and had lunch. Last night, um, in bed, I had zero pain. It's, it's a miracle. Well, we're very happy that you're doing so well. And your surgery was a great one because we um, fixed two discs. You had herniated disc at L45, L5S1. And you can see in this footage right here that we grabbed the herniation out. And it was one of the herniations was really big. And it was really gratifying to get it out because it was resting on your sciatic nerve. Once we took it out, I think your sciatic nerve probably uh, felt a sigh of relief. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and the surgery went very well. The laser debridement of the annulus went well. And I feel like your pain's going to be gone. It's not going to come back. I would agree. All right. Very Absolutely. good. Well, is there anything else you want to tell uh, your viewers? Folks, if, if you're suffering and you're not getting relief from, from those uh, non-invasive therapies, then come see Dr. Duke and have him look at your MRI and, and give a diagnosis. And uh, if you need to have surgery, come down here. He will take good care of you and so will his team. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm Dr. R. Duke Mason. It's January 26, 2022. And I'm here with one of my patients who you underwent the Duke laser disc repair on your lower back for some herniated discs about a week ago. Yes. How are you feeling today? Unbelievable. For almost three years, I had lower back pain and um, it just, you know, it just nags at you, wears you out. And then I came here and you were the first one. I went to two other surgeons and neither one of them picked up what was wrong with me, even though I had the MRI. And you came in and you told me exactly what was going on and you performed the laser surgery and I'm like a different person yeah. a week later. Yeah, you were a different person the next day. Right? The day oh, after oh, you got yeah. no pain, remember? No, uh, absolutely. Yeah. So that pain's gone for the rest of your life. How does that make you feel? New life. Good. And, you know, a long time ago, I remember when people did something great, they, you said, what are you going to do now? They said, I'm going to Disneyland. <laughs> you already left, I can see. No, my <laughs> wife's a big <laughs> Disneyland. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> All right. So, sounds like we helped you with your back pain, and it sounds like you're very satisfied. Oh yeah, I'm recommending a friend of mine in Connecticut to come here. You have to come here. If if you go anywhere else, I really think you're going to be wasting your time. So this guy just looks at you and he can tell what, what needs to be done. He's just, he's a fantastic talent and I'm very grateful that uh, I came here. Oh, we're grateful you did too because it's going to change your life for the, for the better. Congratulations. Thank you, Doc. You're welcome. Good morning. I'm Dr. Duke Mage, and I'm here with one of my patients. And you travel the end of the surgery that we just performed on our gentleman from New York who has lived with back pain coming from his spine, the lumbar spine. Remember, the lumbar spine is made up of bones and joints between the bones. So we have what are called vertebrae here, the yellow things. There's five of them in the lumbar spine, and they're numbered five, four, three, two, one, with the number five being the lowest. And between the number five vertebrae and the tailbone, which is this big thing we call the sacrum, there is a disc here called the L5-S1 disc. Just above that, the next disc up is the L4, L5 disc. 
these two discs account for 90% of back pain that comes from a herniated disc. The next one would be the L3-4. Rarely do we ever see L2-3 or L1-2 disc problems, but the vast majority of back pain comes from these bottom discs. Now, what happens in the disc to cause pain is people get injuries to them, trauma to those discs. And the disc has a wall around it, and then it's got a jelly center, which is depicted in red here. If you do some sudden movement, forceful movement, like a car accident, whiplash to your back, football injury, gymnastics injury, you can tear that wall called the annulus, and you will tear the annulus, it's called a annular tear. It's not very creative, but that's what it is. And then through that tear, this jelly will push out. It's like almost like a silicone jelly, it just pushes out. Once it gets wedged into the tear, Oh man, it creates pain, really bad pain, called back pain. And that's the most common cause of back pain, and it's also the most common cause of neck pain in the world. And people with this pain, it just keeps going and going and going, and the more active you are, the more pain you experience. Sometimes things will settle down to the point that the pain almost goes away, and then you can kind of live a somewhat normal life until you do a little too much and then the pain comes back. And the reason the pain comes back is you've just herniated out another piece of gel. And that gel is now causing more inflammation inside the annular tear. And that's what we do at Duke Spine. We repair these tears to get rid of the back pain permanently. And people come from all over the world to get this done. So this gentleman we just finished had three discs that were causing his back pain. I knew it was three discs because I asked him to show me where his pain was on physical exam. And I said, where is your worst pain? He pointed to L4-5. And then I said, well, do you have pain up here? He said, yes. I said, do you have pain down here? Yes. So you have really three discs of pain. Do you have pain up here at L2-3? No, I don't. So by just using a simple physical exam, I was able to determine that three discs were causing his back pain. I looked at the MRI, I confirmed there were three herniations, small, they were called disc bulges, and um, uh, there, it was the annular tear in the disc bulge causing his back pain. So we just got through repairing all three discs. This segment you're watching is going to be part of his surgery. He'll have it forever to watch. We give every patient a copy of their surgery so they can keep it and watch it and show it off to their friends. All right, we do take questions, and I apologize that our audiovisual uh, microphone was down during the surgery. Uh, we're still trying to get it repaired, um, and we're missing a component that needs to be replaced. Hopefully, that'll come soon. And then I'll be able to talk to my um, broadcast person, uh, who is Flynn today. Thanks, Flynn, for filling in. Um, our regular broadcast person is out. For the rest of the week and he'll be back next next week but i won't be here next week so he's going to get a two-week vacation all right let's take our first question the first question is from joe coletta on youtube and his question is how does uh, the disc heal after putting a hole in it with the endoscope <laughs> joe joe coletta thank you thank you for asking uh the question about how does the disc heal after putting a hole through it with the endoscope Joe, um, we didn't put a hole in the disc with the endoscope. The hole was already there. It's called an annular tear. Uh, and I just got through talking about that, and no offense, but um, remember we talked about how people get an injury to the back of the disc, they get a tear in the annulus, and then through the tear comes a herniation. We didn't create any new holes. I went through an existing hole that's already there. And when I went in, I literally pushed the herniation back inside the disc and we took it out from the inside. So we don't create holes in people's discs. The hole is already there. We went through the hole that was already there. That's the beauty of this surgery is we're not creating any damage to this person's body with the Duke laser disc repair, except at the skin where we cut a little cut, seven millimeters, you know, if you have a shaving cut from shaving yourself, it's probably seven millimeters. So it's really a shaving cut that we're creating and everything else is 
uh, no damage to the body. The next question is from Daniel on YouTube, and he's asking, how do you keep uh, from puncturing vital organs and structures as you set up your endoscopic tube? Daniel from YouTube, great question. Really, really good question. You know, um, Daniel has asked me, Dr. Duke, how do you keep from puncturing a vital organ or anything that you shouldn't puncture for that matter as you're doing this surgery where you're going in? Daniel, great question. I wondered the same thing when I first saw the surgery done. Now remember, I want you all to understand something. P the beginning of the surgery, I put a needle in. That needle went in, this is the back of the spine. That needle went in through this hole right here, right into the herniation, okay? This part of the surgery, putting the needle, the guide wire, and then the dilator, I did not create that. I learned it from surgeons before me, okay? Like Dr. Anthony Young, also the Koreans and a German surgeon, they taught me that. So that part of the surgery has been around for a little while, even before the 16 years that I've been doing it. It's probably been around for around 25 years, maybe 30. It was developed by Dr. Parvis Kambin. He was the first one to develop the transforaminal endoscopic approach for the lumbar spine. And he was in Pittsburgh. He was an orthopedic surgeon. He was a faculty member at the University of, I think, Pittsburgh or Allegheny, where he actually pioneered this approach from the back here through that foramen into the disc. Now, look carefully here. You see how there are these things called the transverse processes right here? Okay, I hope you can see those. All the organs that are vital are below this level of the transverse processes down here. So as long as you stay above, which we do, you're not gonna puncture any organs because there, there are no organs back here, it's just muscle. So great question, I'm glad you asked it. But the answer is there are no organs as long as you do it right. And that's why I joke around sometimes and I say, don't try this at home because the way I do it, it looks easy. But if you're off by just one or two degrees, you can actually hit the kidneys or you can hit the aorta or you can hit you know, the intestines, which will be really bad because you'll puncture them and you'll puncture the colon or the small intestine and then the patient will become septic and they could die. So you're right, you have to worry about those things, but if you learn the technique and do it right, which I do obviously, you won't hit any organs. Shane from YouTube is asking, is this the same as an ACDF? I have bad shoulder pain at the back area. Some doctors say I need an ACDF and others say I need shots, not a surgeon. Hey, great, Shane, thank you for asking. Um, the Duke laser disc repair surgery you just watched is not the same as an ACDF. An ACDF surgery is an anterior cervical discectomy infusion. It's where we go in through the front of the, the neck and we clean out a disc and we put a cage and a metal plate. You don't want that surgery. That is an old fashioned surgery, highly invasive, all kinds of complications from it. You want the laser surgery that we do here. It's better than an ACDF. I think what you're really asking is, could your laser surgery be used instead of an ACDF to treat the same problem an ACDF treats? And the answer is yes, absolutely. You don't need ACDF, you don't need artificial discs. Very invasive, the surgeon's leaving metal inside your spine, metal that if God, if it was meant to be there, God would have put it there. So this surgery is far better than an ACDF. That's why we broadcast these surgeries so people like you can learn you have an option. Don't go with Fusion, go with the Duke Laser Disc Repair. Check out our website. You can learn about the uh, cervical Duke Laser Disc Repair and it's better than an ACDF. The last question is from Beth on YouTube and she's asking, can the disc ever regenerate over time? Hi Beth, um, great question. Beth from YouTube has asked, can the disc ever regenerate over time? So it's an interesting question. The answer is yes, it can, and no, it can't. It's really mixed, and the reason is this. What can regenerate is the annular tear or annulus fibrosis. That will regenerate after this surgery, the Duke Laser Disc Repair. The Duke Laser Disc Repair is the only surgery in the world that allows and basically treats the annular tear 
to allow it to heal and regenerate. However, what cannot be regenerated is the nucleus propulsus or jelly inside. Once you have a tear and you herniate out a piece of the jelly, that jelly will never grow back. So the jelly never regenerates, but the wall of the disc will regenerate after the duke laser disc repair. Again, there's no other surgery available that will allow the wall to regenerate except my surgery. That was last question. That was our last question. I hope you enjoyed. We will be back on Thursday, which is in two days, and we'll be performing three surgeries on, Tuesday, on Thursday. Uh, I'm not sure what they are at this point, but they should be fun to watch. So hopefully you'll join us on Thursday. I'm Dr. R. Duke Majan, CEO and founder of the Duke Spine Institute and pioneer of the Duke Laser Disc Repair. I hope you learned something today through watching our surgeries. Um, other than that, <laughs> Monica needs to work on her x-ray tech skills. <laughs> I get some comments from people at times. Give Monica a break. Yes, she did a great job. We appreciate all of her help. I'm just giving her a little razzle dazzle, you know. It wouldn't be uh, it wouldn't be me if I didn't give her a hard time. 